Earth is the only planet among all the planets and moons in the cosmos where life is possible and can thrive. However, the curiosity of knowing about lives on any other object in the universe has made the scientists perform countless missions. During one such mission, the researchers have found the possibility of life on one of Saturn's moons, Enceladus, where there is water and an abundance of building blocks of life. But the question remains if life actually exists there. Welcome to Cosmos Lab, your one station for all the news from space. Join us in today's video to find out about the possible signs of life on Enceladus and what the scientists have to say about this. In this massive universe, Earth as we know it is the best place where life can exist. There are many million identified species on the Earth, living in environments ranging from the deepest ocean to a few miles up in the atmosphere. However, researchers are of the view that other options for supporting life in our solar system, such as Saturn's moon Enceladus, might hold primitive living beings. However, the sixth largest Ceterian moon is an icy world located too far from the sun, which makes it an unlikely candidate for life. But that's not the case. Enceladus is the second nearest and sixth largest of the major regular moons of Saturn and the brightest of all its moons. It was discovered in 1789 by the English astronomer William Herschel and named after one of Greek mythology's giants. Enceladus has a diameter of around 500 kilometers and circles Saturn in a prograde orbit. Its average density is only 60% more than that of water, indicating that it contains significant amounts of non-ice material. Its surface reflects almost all of the light that hits it. It is mostly smooth, However, there are some cratered and grooved planes. The surface is almost entirely composed of water ice with traces of carbon dioxide, ammonia, and light hydrocarbons. Enceladus remains unknown until the passage of the US spacecraft Voyager 2 in 1981. The mission returned photographs demonstrating that Enceladus is geologically complex with its surface having experienced five separate evolutionary stages as it approaches 87,000 kilometers. After that, Cassini was launched on October 15, 1997 and entered Saturn's orbit on June 30, 2004. The spacecraft discovered fascinating geological activity on Enceladus after its first close flyby of the icy moon on February 17, 2005 prompting adjustments to the mission's flight plan to increase the number of Enceladus flybys. During its 20-year mission, which ended with an inertial crash into Saturn, the spacecraft completed almost 300 orbits of Saturn and 23 close flybys of Enceladus, including many deep dives into its plumes. When NASA's Cassini spacecraft flew over Enceladus at an altitude of 725 miles, its first near approach showed an unexpected world with a subsurface ocean and plumes of water, ice, and vapor erupting from the moon's south polar area, making it one of the solar system's most possibly livable places. Cassini made a groundbreaking discovery after plunging through one of Enceladus's plumes. The plumes are massive sprays of water vapor gushing from the moon into space. A new study published in Nature Astronomy further investigates Enceladus's possible habitability, comparing Earth's deep-sea plumes where microbial life thrives with the ones found on the icy moon and suggesting that they may be home to Earth-like microorganisms. Through the data from Cassini, scientists were able to know more about these plumes these plumes were first discovered in 2006 when water was detected flying hundreds of kilometers into space at great speeds from under Enceladus's icy crust at the moon's south pole. The Cassini spacecraft dove into Enceladus's plumes multiple times, measuring its composition using mass spectroscopy. 
the plumes were discovered to have substantially larger concentrations of methane, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and organic compounds in a higher concentration than expected. The plumes of Enceladus, according to Cassini scientists, comprise material from the moon's subterranean ocean, which is pushed up by hydrothermal vents on the bottom. The material is subsequently ejected through the tiger stripes. Tiger stripes are four straight parallel fractures slashed across Enceladus's south pole. These fractures are unlike any other in the solar system. Ice spews from these tiger stripes from the moon's icy interior into space, creating a cloud of fine ice particles over the moon's south pole and creating Saturn's mysterious E-ring. This plume study focused on methane abundance discovering that Enceladus's environment is ideal for life and that the methane generated might be biological in origin. Methane is largely created on Earth by bacteria, whereas organic chemicals are thought to be the building blocks of life. Cassini didn't detect life on Enceladus, but it did confirm the moon has the right components for life. Water, certain chemicals, and energy sources from hydrothermal vents. This can be a possibility of life because there is a similarity between Enceladus and the early Earth. According to common belief, life on Earth originated some 4 billion years ago on areas of the ocean floor where sunlight couldn't reach. Warm water collided with Earth's rocky crust, producing hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor to produce chemical food for life, including molecular hydrogen. Life flourished in the vicinity of these hydrothermal vents, feasting on the nutrients emitted by those underwater chimneys. According to Cassini's findings, these circumstances on early Earth may have been identical to those on present-day Enceladus, implying that microbial life might be hidden somewhere in the moon's salty depths. Scientists have not gotten their answers yet, and more missions are planned for Saturn's brightest moon. A team of scientists and engineers at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory in Maryland is proposing to NASA a mission to investigate further. It's called Orbilander, and it can act as both an orbiter and a lander. Orbilander would start by orbiting Enceladus for approximately 200 days. This time in orbit will be spent looking for the right place to land. Despite Cassini's extensive surveillance of Saturn and its moons, there isn't enough high-resolution topography data available for Enceladus's South Pole. Orbilander's mission is focused on answering a single question. Is there life on Enceladus? With that, we have come to the end of our video. What are your views on the possibility of life on other planets or moons? Share with us in the comments section below. If you like the content, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Until next time, have a great day and thank you for watching.